so I'm Rachel, and I wrote this article about um, cool. I wrote this article about the time that I found out my grandmother was a sex worker, and this is about the time I spoke to her seven years on about her life, obviously before me. I don't want you to take sides, Rachel, but your mom's family isn't what you think it is. Your grandma was a prostitute, and that's how she met your grandpa. My dad kept holding his head in his hands, repeatedly saying, he just never expect it. She doesn't look like a prostitute, as if sex workers even wear some kind of easily identifiable uniform. In fact, my grandmother carries herself in a way that rubs your own shortcomings in your face. She's dignified, educated, fearless, and the most poisoned, well-traveled woman I've ever met. I called my grandmother, Gladys, to talk about her past. It took seven years after the divorce. Before she answered, I considered hanging up. She sounded brittle. This was the 50s in Venezuela, and even now, it's still a very conservative, over-religious, misogynist society. Men ruled Venezuela now, and they continue to rule it today, Grandma told me. Prostitution has always been rife there, so much so that it's entirely legal. How could a country that has always recognized prostitution as a serious profession attach such a social st stigma to it? Sex has always existed. Everyone did a lot of things behind closed doors. It wasn't an open society. Prostitution has existed since the beginning of time, she told me. Gladys was born in Caracas, Venezuela in 1933 and lived there until she left for the States in the 70s, after my mom was born. With two young children from a pre previous relationship and an absent father, she struggled to afford basic living costs and wasn't able to enroll them into school. As a predominantly Catholic nation, the only schools available were religious schools, ones you couldn't get into if you were a bastard. My goal was to find a man that would give a surname to my children. At that time, if your biological father didn't recognize you as theirs, your life would be very difficult. She got into sex work through a good friend who was also a prostitute. She too had children and was in financial crisis. Every night, my grandma would leave her kids with her mother and tell her she was going to her job at an overnight factory. A perfectly credible story. In the early 50s, Venezuela went through an industrial revolution that saw it soar and become the world's fourth wealthiest country per capita, a title that has now been traded for the home of the second most dangerous city in the world. It was also the golden age for the poster wife, the movement most debilitating for Venezuelan female sex workers at the time. To many, then and now, prostitution was a way to have a better life. Caracas was a prostitution hotspot. All the Americans went there to see us. It was almost like an appointment, um, it was almost like a novelty. We, were, we weren't called hookers, we were called appointments, and appointment only brothels. There were two tiers of prostitution, women like us and women who were on the street. We were high end, so the money was very good. She was making between 85 and 95 bolivares for this a night, which was the equivalent of about $421 at the time, a small fortune. A year into sex work, she met my grandfather, Joseph, who was one of her regular clients. Your grandpa loved prostitutes. He used to come see me every weekend, Grandma said. He was a very shy, timid man. I could tell he wasn't confident enough to talk to women, but still had all the natural urges of a man. What she said completely took me by surprise. Growing up, my grandfather was a very outspoken, assertive French Venezuelan man. I guess he made up for the lack of confidence he had in his romantic life and everything else. When you're a kid, you look at your seniors as if they're superhuman, not people who can be weak, emotional, and unstable. It was like I was having a really fucked up epiphany about my family as a whole. I'd never considered my grandparents went through real gritty life experiences. To me, they were perfect, pure grown-ups around me who have never been hurt. My grandma could hear the shock and self-doubt in my voice. The reason your grandfather could have never have more kids is because he picked up a lot of STDs and was of sterile, she said. I had four abortions because men wouldn't follow the rules. I went to very expensive doctors who gave me abortion pills and herbs. A lot of my colleagues died getting under the table abortions, which is something I would never do. I'd rather have the kid. We spoke about the treatment of prostitutes who had job-related health problems and how doctors, claiming they did it to themselves, constantly, constantly rejected these female patients from their waiting rooms. Unsurprisingly, most of these doctors were men. For grandma, the institutional abuse didn't stop there. It translated into how she was treated by some of her clients. Though prostitution was legal and apparently regulated by the government, this was seldom put into action. Police officers would turn a blind eye to harassment and exploitation because they simply didn't respect female workers. 
I became very cold and insensitive to sex, Grandma told me. I started having less respect for men. A lot of times they didn't treat me right because they didn't see me as a decent, normal woman. At the time, that wasn't accepted, and it's still not accepted fully now. She told me horror stories about the abuse she endured from drunk customers. She's been spat on, slapped in the face, called a puta, Spanish for whore, and ridiculed just walking down the street. I remained professional throughout, but these silly men would mistreat me because they thought they were better than me. They didn't realize this was a business transaction. Well, I was smarter than all of them. I made them pay the few coins that they had on the softness of my body. But despite the moments of darkness that she experienced in her work, she said she would never regret her time as a prostitute. I'm not embarrassed by my sex work at all. It gave me a good life. Thanks to that, I found a good man and I gave my children a last name. Your grandfather kept his promise and got me out of there. I found my family. Growing up, I put my grandma on a pedestal. She had never lived with, she had always lived with me in my family home. I got to know her on an intimate level, not just the way you'd form a relationship with a grandparent who lived in another city. What, was, what always particularly struck me about my grandmother was her ability to always remain calm, no matter what the situation. Whenever my parents would argue, she'd simply walk into the room, tell them to quiet down, and walk out like nothing was even happening. When someone would cut her off in traffic, she'd roll her eyes in a way that seemed like she pitied them for being inept. The way she tranquilly approached conflict was the opposite of me. I was a crier, I had anxiety attacks, and I would raise my voice. I wanted to be serene like her. That same stability is what won my grandpa over. As her client, he began to, question, he began to ask her questions about her personal life, interests, ambitions, and family. I asked her if she felt threatened or if, she was, if he was being intrusive, but all she said was we were falling in love. They regularly met outside of the brothel in secret, which was strictly forbidden. They got to know each other more over the course of six months, and then my grandpa proposed to her. My grandma knew he was at least financially stable enough to afford prostitutes twice a week, but she admitted that she was worried about money. She still had two young children to feed, and they weren't even his. Unexpectedly, when they got married, he gave her two sons his last name and took care of him like his own. After my mother was born, they left Caracas together and flew to America to settle down in Miami. When I was younger, Grandma always told me I needed to be a lady, but one who was smarter than all of the boys around her. Now I know why she was one of those women. I felt empowered as a sex worker and a woman. I felt in control, she said. I could handle the situation and manipulate it in a way that only benefited me. My dad's attitude towards her on the night, he told me, was with extreme trepidation, almost to make sure he wasn't overselling the story, worried that I would find a part of it attractive. He wouldn't even call it a prostitution, he would say what she did. His clear disrespect for my grandmother had the reverse effect on me. It made me disrespect him. My grandma's still the best woman I know, and her life choices have made her who she is. She's 82 now and lives a long way from appointment-only brothels in Caracas. Down the phone, she told me her story with the same authority and confidence she had back then. If men have the right to pay for sex without judgment, grandma told me, then women also have the right to make sex a career. I'll stand by that until the day I die. I can't breathe. Amazing, right? What a story. Yeah. Yeah.